Okay, you guys, what is the link between trust and femininity? We are so glad that you're here because you're choosing to thrive after betrayal, trauma, or addiction. Hi, I'm Ashlyn, the once betrayed. I'm Kobe, the once addicted. And I'm Brandon, the expert. Now, why am I an expert? Because I've treated betrayal, trauma, and addiction for over a decade. I want to invite you guys over to our premium site where you get in-depth content and access to us. We answer questions there for you and you get interaction with like-minded people. To find that site, go ahead and click details and scroll to the bottom. You'll see the link to our Patreon site. Okay, we're going to review real quick. This is a pretty incredible review. It's called Betrayed to Broken to Better. And it goes like this. I found this podcast searching for answers about how to save my relationship with or save myself from my boyfriend who suffers from drug addiction. I began listening and realized it wasn't about drugs, but the rest of the content applied seamlessly. The more I listened, the more I realized that my boyfriend, who was also suffering from sex addiction, probably even more than drugs. Thank you for being, or thank you for opening my eyes and giving me tools to learn, heal myself first, and possibly the relationship in future if and when we get to that place after finding success in our individual uh, recovery processes. He is now in rehab and seems committed to recovery from his multiple addictions. I am taking this time and space for myself and I'm committed to rebuilding my self-worth. Um, thanks to you. You have been a source of hope and optimism in what, I, what can feel like such a dark and lonely place. You've helped me put words to my feelings and given me practical advice to work through them. You've been my lifeline to bring me out of the dark place more times than I could count. Thank you from the bottom of my broken but healing heart. Man, that's so cool. Yeah. Very thankful for that review. And, uh, you know, this is a, this is a human issue, right? What we're dealing with. And it, it's, it's pretty interesting how she used the word seamlessly to describe the application of the, the human experience outside of this specific siloed um, addiction um, and how it contrasts with, with her experience and ours. But uh, if you haven't yet, please hop over to uh, iTunes and leave us a review, rate us and subscribe, please, if you haven't yet, because uh, you know, it, it's the reviews that have taken place prior to this one specifically that help this uh, individual find us. So uh, we appreciate that review very Thank much. Thank you. Definitely. Um, some of you may be wondering why I'm here because I am taking a break, but I came specifically today for our guest because I'm excited for the topic. Not that I haven't been excited for past topics, but I feel like I'm in a place today where I not only can show up for all of our audience, and for myself, but I want to um, experience this and understand and learn a little bit more. So uh, we have Shannon with us. She is a life coach who merges business and personal coaching together. So a little bit more niched, bringing the emotional side out and finding trust where it's been lost and then bridging that gap into the business world. She's here with us from Texas on Zoom, and we're excited to have her energy to bring it to you. She's worked with hundreds of women, helping them embrace the power in their femininity. She does a great job helping others find the value of what's already inside of them. And we've asked her to be with us today to explain what the heck femininity is and how we can step into it. So welcome here. Good to have you, Shannon. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We are uh, from the hip, uh, kind of a podcast where we just go with whatever is and uh, so we feel pretty, pretty good about uh, you rolling with this, Shannon. So um, awesome. I guess right off the top, it's femininity, like Ashlyn, like you talked about. Hang on, hang on. Let, her, let her kind of tell, her, tell us who she is and her yeah, story Yeah, that's a good a idea. Bit. That's a good idea. And then, wow. we'll, and then we'll get into that. All right, great. Well, what's really, first off, I want to thank you guys for letting me be a part. This particular topic, when I tell you, is near and dear to my heart. Um, this one particular conversation around the essence of femininity and especially the trust link actually saved, I would say my whole relationship with myself. It 
totally reinvented my marriage. It changed the whole trajectory of my parenting of our four kids. And it's completely shifted how I run businesses and now serve people from a coaching perspective. So when I tell you it's all inclusive, it's a really big topic for me. And I love it. I love it. I, you know, Shannon, as you say that, <clears throat> I just, I, I feel like I understand what you're saying because in my groups and in my work, when we shifted to um, masculinity and femininity, femininity, and then that polarity in relationships between the two, it changed everything. It, it, uh, it, it helps people understand who they really are and step into their power and create what they can truly create. And so I love what you're saying there. Yeah, thank you. And as far as like the topic today, and I was sharing with Ashlyn, this is such a big topic. We really could be here for hours on end. Um, and so it's going to be tricky to do it justice. But, you know, with the link between trust and femininity, I think one of the biggest gifts that I could give the audience is giving them one first step that would completely shift their ability to trust again or create something in a new way with that. That would be huge. Love it. Yes. Love the idea. Yeah. Because I think oftentimes the, um, it, in the dynamics with the betrayed and the addicted, again, that, that could be either man or woman who is the betrayed or the addicted. And it could be um, gay and lesbian couples as well. It could be any number of things. But ultimately what we're talking about is, from my experience, is realizing as we've kind of creeped into this particular space, uh, I, for the, I, I didn't have the masculinity that I actually, um, needed in order to help Ashlyn balance out the femininity that, that was in her. And a, a lot of times we have a lot of, um, partners, specifically women who are like pulling their men along and guys who just like crumble and fall because of shame. And they just lose all sense of identity specifically within their own masculine, uh, like universe mm -hmm. and world. And, and that's a, that's, that's a, a really tough dynamic. So, so something right. you both have just touched on. Oh, go ahead, Ashlyn. I'm sorry. I was just curious how you got into this world uh, because it is pretty niche and I would love to hear yeah. why trust and femininity fit together for you. Well, do you think we could even first for the listeners um, about let's kind of debunk what uh, feminism versus femininity is first, just Absolutely. in case that's in Yes. in the air right now. So the conversation is not about feminism. This is about literally taking a look at, we have a male and female form and we have just distinct differences between how male and female look in the form difference. And we have different wiring nine times out of 10. And so we're really taking a look at then in the innate properties of 99% of the you know population of what the true essence of femininity is. This is not linked to feminism in any way. Um, it's just, that's not where we're going with that, the conversation. When you say the true essence of femininity, and I know this is, this is really what we could talk about for days, like you say, <laughs> um, but like, what, what are some examples? Like what, what, what does that actually mean? Well, if we just look at the female form different than men, I mean, we have all kinds of different differences and typically women are going to be smaller in stature, smaller bone mm -hmm. structure, not quite as physically strong as men, typically, as far as muscular strength. You look at how our hormones are different. You know, we can have babies, guys cannot. I mean, there's just certain things like, yeah, you know, our voices don't change. There's all these certain things. But then when it comes to the wiring, it's like women thrive when they know they're safe. Yes. Thrive. Okay. Yes. And men love a challenge. Let's go. And yeah. so like that's some internal wiring and not all of us came with a hundred percent of a hundred percent of it. And it's very interesting that there's certain elements that are much more feminine and much more masculine, but that's when you jump into, did your upbringing, did your culture, did your community all support the dose of wiring you came with, with masculine or feminine. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden that starts really influencing what you feel is acceptable to get love or to be accepted. Yes. So um, it's like, that's what I mean by it's a big topic. And, and this segues into what Ash, um, Ashlyn was asking is like, how did I get into this? And I'd love to just touch on it for a second because I really feel like I'll create a context for the audience. 
Cool. Um, so I was born in the Bible buckle of East Texas, Longview, Texas, and to my mom and dad, Linda and Ken. And I was raised in an entrepreneur family, flipping houses and renovating homes at nine years old. I mean, I was just born strategic wow. uh, entrepreneur. And my mom had been actually hurt in a prior marriage where there had been some betrayal. So there was that element that was there. And then I ended up marrying the boy next door and met him when I was 15. He was 17. So we got uh, partnered together very early in life. But one of the key things for the purpose of the podcast is one of the closest people in my life at the time was, I'm going to call her Sarah, but she's still living and I want to just honor her protection. Right. And um, Sarah was like a mother figure to me and was like a mentor that was older in age. And I had no idea. And, and the reason why I'm sharing about Sarah and how it impacted me is that so many people that are here, whether they be the man or the woman, you have no idea just how much what, where your lack of trust is being um, handed down to the next generation. Mm. And that was my case. So Sarah had been um, married very early and was very innocently, very feminine. And, and when you look at trust, like if I said trust is I can give you a hundred on the test right now, I'm just giving you a hundred. It's your hundred to lose. She was versus let's say we've all had some water under the bridge and you get into a new relationship and I'm going to maybe start the relationship with an 85 because that's right. all I got to give <laughs> my, um, so Sarah started the relationship with a hundred, very naive. And she married a very masculine young man who she had no idea in her ignorance had the most extreme of extreme sexual addictions that were limited to two or four legs, if you can read in between the lines. Mm -hmm. She didn't know what she was getting into at a very young age. And they were together for almost a decade. And she, and she was unaware that hundreds of affairs had happened. And she was never aware of it. And it came about in a very abrupt, in-your-face way that she found out and she literally was still in love with him and also knew that she was ready to start a family, had waited, and then all of a sudden finds out this whole relationship's been not what she thought it was. And she went from this, I would say, very innocent feminine personality to a couple of years of depression to looking in the mirror and then with that kind of draw a line in the sand, this will never happen to me again armor mm -hmm. closed heart i will never let this happen to me again i will never trust a man to that level again i will never be made like a fool of to that degree and so a lot of my teenage years upbringing young adulthood was literally being baked and bathed in that influence of I don't want you to be hurt like I was yeah. and out of love and protection, Shannon, I want you to know how to guard your heart. And it's very dangerous to trust a man fully. Look at what happened to me. Yeah. So then you add, I meet my guy at 15 and we start investing in real estate. We also started investing in oil and gas and we built our companies up. We had four babies and then at about your age 38, I'm literally um, going to a business event that I thought it was pure business, but they brought in a little personal development and I, it, I call it my God hijacking. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those things where this topic of masculine and feminine came up and I was asked the question, do you think you're masculine or feminine in your core essence? And I'm like, masculine completely i mean i just completely owned that and then there was this like well what if you're not are you even open to entertain that and it was so hard for me to even be open to the thing of how wh what does that mean what does that cost to me and how have i pushed my husband away and i had no idea that me closing and putting armor for very good intentions of how what was modeled was pushing my husband away so much 
Mm -hmm. And I'm very fortunate it did not end up leading to infidelity, but it had every opportunity to because my heart was so armored against him because I didn't want to be hurt like my mentor Sarah had been. Mm -hmm. Does that help kind of wow. bring oh, yeah. that up? Wow. I think there's some 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 real parallels between what your experience was. And and I appreciate you sharing that. And God bless Sarah. Uh, um, uh, a couple things that you said, Shannon, that, that's just fascinating to me. Um, one is the secondary betrayal trauma um, that you experienced. And, and you know, as a, as a child growing up, you, you had no idea. You were just, it right. was just, that, that's really interesting. And the, the other thing that's fascinating that you said is how you were showing up masculine um, as a defense mechanism and Absolutely. your true essence inside it you know it was really even hard to even look at that that okay. femininity is there and that's your true essence but you were showing up masculine as a defense mechanism um i think some women are more masculine i think that's real um what do you think are all women just just it's femininity or can some women have masculinity so that's a really big open a can of worms conversation <laughs> and um this is how I would answer that. Uh, I absolutely believe with all my heart that we don't have all of the answers to that question, that we are just all doing our best in our human ability to go, okay, let's just look at the facts and how is it working for you? And like, this is how I would present this. I believe if you listed beautiful attributes of men and women, being courageous, being a protector, being creative, being conscious, being a nurturer, being loving, being empathetic. We can line all these things up. And what's happened is our culture has become kind of like, well, masculine means this, feminine only means this, and I have to pick. And then yes. it makes women, especially if they hear this message, this is where I hear a lot of the, the frustration is, well, doggone it, like I have a lot of masculine attributes and so I must have to be that at home and then I'm supposed to shift and then I'm supposed to be something different yes. at home and I, what the heck am I supposed to do? And this is what I would like to present. What if that beautiful list of strengths and even non-strengths have equal access and you can be 100% completely feminine and access it and 100% completely masculine and access it. And so an example I would have, um, and I shared this with, with actually with Matt is a ma if you've seen the new version of wonder woman. Yes. And Oh my gosh, I have a girl crush on her. And <laughs> I, there is the scene where she's in the trenches and she wants to go over this front line. It's very dangerous because she wants to save a village. And she's talking about, I need to get over there. And they're like, you're crazy. We can't do that. That's like, you know, no man's land. And the guys turn their back. And of course she takes her hair down and whisks it. And it's, of course it's gorgeous. And then she starts going up this ladder and she takes her cape off. And of course her, you know, Wonder Woman outfit, power suits on. And she comes up the stairs and she's standing there and she starts walking across this amazing enemy territory, risking her life. And you just see this moment of her starting to walk, starting to kind of run and just engaging. And you watch her and she is defending herself. She's running. She's courageous. She's bold. She's a protector. And she is 100% in her feminine. Yes. 100%. And I could probably line up 100 men and say, Masculine men, when you see that, are you drawn to her and you pulled to her? And there's like, uh, yes, uh-huh, yeah. uh -huh, uh -huh. because right. she's still completely in her feminine, where if I all of a sudden switched and put a woman that is much more in her masculine energy, kind of the G.I. Jane kind of a feel, mm -hmm. right? Do the same, the whole same scenario. And I ask a man, what do you feel when you see her? And they're like, get the hell out of the way. Like, Oh, you know, like, <laughs> right. like, you know, you want to protect. And so I want to make a point that we have access in the feminine to all those attributes and just as men do as well. So, so does that help? Oh, absolutely. So I, I, I love what you just said, Shannon. I think it's hard to, to define because this is what I'm thinking is if I, 
I, I think a lot of times we put feminine, weak, masculine, mm-hmm. strong, kind of whatever. And right? why would you want to sign up for that? Yeah, please. <laughs> um, so, but but if I like went home tonight, empathized with my eleven-year-old, and cried with her, oh, and I cried with her, and I held her pain, and I. I could be, uh, that's not me tapping into my femininity to do that. I could be a masculine man empathizing and crying with my daughter, right? That's kind of what you're saying. So true story. um, I've actually been in some different live events and different men uh, that have maybe led some of the events I've been in. And there's a particular situation where this particular man who is uh, very masculine was serving a woman and having an intervention and she had been through some serious trauma and she was just pouring her heart out, completely opening it up to the whole room. And this gentleman that was leading the, the event went over to her and, and with her permission, like held her and he's got tears running right. down his face and he's holding her like Papa Bear would hold right. her. And she is just melting into him, just I'm letting it all pour out and I'm watching this going, okay, that's hot. Whoa. Yes. Right. You know, like, I'm like, <laughs> there is nothing about who he's being that was not a hundred percent masculine, yes. right. conscious, empathetic, loving, tender, protector. I mean, all of that, but it was a hundred percent in his masculine. Okay. And so keep going. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just, I hear that. I hear exactly what you've been sharing. And I can't help but think of our own story, but also the people that we get to mentor and our audience who do show up a lot like I have and Kobe in a very opposite role with that closed off heart and then wondering why, why don't you love me? And I'm going like hand up to the face, but also like- Can we talk about this? Oh my gosh. Can can we talk about that? Yes. And I want to share a quick story here. <laughs> yes, so yes. my dad passed away uh, just over a month ago and I was very much, and I still am some days where I'm like, why aren't you holding me, but also get the crap away from me. Okay. And it's this tug of war that I'm having yes. in my, in my heart and in my head. And when I finally dialed down to what do I actually need? And I wrote it down. I got pen to paper instead of just wondering or assuming or holding resentments and having that hard heart, I told him, I just need you to hold me every night. I need you to hold me. And when that first time when Kobe just held me, we both cried. Mm-hmm. And he said, what? That was the, that was the first time that Ashlyn cried while facing me, while looking at me in my eyes. And it was a time of connection that we had never experienced before. It was like an intimacy that we had never experienced. And that evoked enormous emotion from me, but it all happened like in this dance space of Ashlyn being tucked in in, in my arm and shoulder right? and her just looking at me. And I got to see Ashlyn's soul through her tears and through her eyes. And Mm. it was one of the most, I guess, um, intimate experiences that we've ever had. Right. And, and it was, it took this immense broken heart of mine to finally open up and give that heart to Kobe. Mm -hmm. And, and it's just ironic because we have started stepping into, okay, what is masculinity and what is femininity? And then, okay, look, we just had a moment where it's showing up and I don't have to be this like, get away from me. I can say I need help. And I'm, yeah. So keep going. (laughs) But Shannon, can I ask you something? So it it has a lot to do with what Ash and Kobe just shared. Um, You know, we talk about betrayal trauma all the time and the story that you shared, um, you you know, that the the trauma, the fear, it gets in the way of that vulnerability. And, and so (laughs) Like for you, for example, you're at this conference and you're realizing, oh my gosh, I'm showing up defended with my husband. Um, how do you go from, you know, really being in that push and pull to <laughs> recognizing, okay, that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm going to start to put that down a little bit and step into my energy. 
Um, how, do, how do you do that? I know that's a huge question. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, it's a huge question. And <laughs> so out of complete, like um, such a beautiful place, that journey for me took me about five years and it was bumpy. Was it like a conscious journey? Meaning like yes. you knew yes. where uh, you were headed uh, and you I were did. working to get there? Yes, but okay. it was not like, but it was like with the blinders on. Mm. Like I, I'm creating more freedom uh -huh. And I don't even know exactly what that's supposed to look like. And I went and sought out different mentors and I would get parts of it that really um, resonated with me, but then there's missing pieces of the puzzle. And one of the biggies was I, when I started learning more about the dynamics of masculine and feminine, I started kind of demonizing masculine. I don't want to be that. Uh -huh. I don't want to be that, like I, uh, this thing I didn't want to be instead of having someone teach me, no, no, there is courageous feminine. There is strong feminine. There's determined and bold feminine. There is even making things simple and super organized and tight and making it much more like men love to minimize and make things smaller and much more, it's less flowy, tan, you know, all out there. I can do that and be completely in my feminine. So I didn't, a lot of my journey was not having the pieces of the puzzle. And once I would say that the biggest thing that got in my way at the beginning, and I'm trying to keep it tight for where we're at as far as like, how do we build trust? Uh, what's the link between trust and femininity? Here's the thing. My initial reaction when I was learning about this was my own inner tug of war with like, is that true for me or is that not true for me? Mm -hmm. Am I truly feminine in my core? But what does that mean? What does that cost me? Oh my gosh, because I was raised to be, I was very much, I'm a recovering perfectionist. I very much am committed to performance. I want so much. I was raised to be the good girl. And I'm like, what, what does this mean? Does this mean I've done it all wrong? And I was like, I wasn't acceptable. That wasn't acceptable. And so then I'm like, what does this mean with the kids? And what does it mean? My husband's not happy. I thought he was happy. And so my whole world turned into this upside down tornado for me. And, and what the thing is, is this is when that's going on and there's a lot of your, I'd have to say my ego was ma massively unchecked and I really wanted to be right that I'd done it right. Please tell me I've done it right because I, my whole life I've been trying to kick butt and what do you mean it wasn't the right way? I was so consumed with that, that I was so triggered with myself and what it cost me. And this is where the inside tug of war with myself, the inside tug of war with the possibility, my inside tug of war with, well, what about my husband's name's Dan? It's like, well, what about his part in this deal? What, wait, wait, wait. I mean, like there's all this self-protection and it came down to the pattern in the root of literally having almost four decades of don't trust, guard your heart, armor up, shield up. And so here's where Ash was talking about this tug of war, even like what you had in maybe in the past with Colby, as far as being open, I was very thankful to find and create and have tools that help me get over that hump of feeling like I want to love you hu husband. I want to open to you and I want to go on this feminine thing, but I am so scared. Yes. There's a part of me that wants so much to have this amazing chemistry, but I'm scared of what it's going to cost me. Like, I, I bet it's like, I'm not even being rational. And that is why I was so committed to being here. And like, if I could give the audience that tool to actually in less than 20 minutes, sometimes five minutes, resolve inner tug of war that has to do with trust. It could have to do with, I'm ready to move to a new city. I don't want to move. I want to put my kids mm -hmm. in this new school. No, I don't. I'm going to homeschool. No, they're going to public. Uh, you know, I, just any kind of scenario where it is this or that, and you feel completely crazy on the inside. Mm -hmm. Once we get that resolved down to a zero, and we, we now can bring ourselves to the conversation, whatever it is, do I stay married? Do I divorce the guy? Yes. I'm going to stay married. Well, I'm going to stay married, but I'm not going to open, but I sure do love him. And I sure would like to be attracted to him, but I'm not going to give myself up. You feel crazy. Is it possible Shannon in that scenario that you just described for that to 
be a subconscious oh, yes. dialogue without oh, the individual yes. even realizing that that's what they're thinking Completely. or more importantly, doing. Yes. It's, it's typically very subconscious on what's going on. And then we have different triggers that bring it up, that bring up the lack of trust or the bring up your heart just goes, I feel really vulnerable right now and I'm not going there. So yeah, it's, it's very much, I would call a stacking and keeping score, the body keeping the score over all these mm -hmm. decades yeah. that you have no control over, oh my gosh, I just got hijacked. And then what's concerning is, especially if there's been some sort of a betrayal and some people are like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm committed to finding a way to reinvent this marriage. But if they haven't handled what's been scored in the body around the lack of trust, it's like you try to have a resourceful conversation on what that's going to look like, but the blame, the upset, the, the fears, all that's still here. It's, it's, it's like trying to um, look through a glass of dirty water and saying, I know what I want on the other side. No, you don't. This is so much in the way. How about we resolve that so that the most powerful version of you, the most committed version of you, the most loving version of you can show up in the conversation and really create what you want to in a marriage or even let's say you're saying no to the marriage, but here's the deal. The grass isn't necessarily greener on the other side. So you go and find another partner, but you did not handle the stacking of betrayal and the lack of trust. So guess what? That baggage just goes with you into the next relationship. So this is really such a beautiful gift that you can give yourself. And this is our part, meaning there's his part or her part. There's my part. And maybe there's God's part. We got to handle our part before we can co-collaborate with someone, co-create with another partner to create some beautiful outcome. And this example of the push pull, um, like for example, in business, for example, there was um, a founder of a half a billion dollar company that we were working with. And she had had many betrayals with men in the past. And one of them, and, and so these were in romantic relationships. And she ended up getting herself in a business relationship with a man that she couldn't trust. And she was ready to exit the business and blow it up. And we're talking about a half a billion dollar company. And I'm listening to her language and I'm feeling this push whole push pull, push pull. And I'm like, can we have a conversation? Because this is not just your generation, is it? This happened before. And she's like, yeah, this is a generational thing with men. And I'm like, how about we resolve all that? And then let's see what you really think about the business. And once that got handled in a very short amount of time, what happened was literally she fell back in love with the business with like a clean glass of gla uh, water instead of the, the, you know, particles of dirt being in there. She could objectively bring herself to, okay, I need to clean some things up, but I do love this business. But before that subconscious pain clouded everything. Shannon, you're, you're a uh, man. I love what you're saying. And I think, um, you need to rewind the last five minutes of what she just said because it is so critical to your healing. Because uh, what I what we see a lot is people being stuck in the in the blame and the, and the the fault. Especially we we deal with betrayal trauma. Yeah. And and um, but like your your example with the business, that woman, in order for her to love the business again, her partner that that guy he didn't need to change. Um, it, maybe he, he does suck. Maybe, maybe things he, he was doing wasn't great in the business, but she understood her power. She understood what she wanted in her life and she was able to move forward regardless of him, right? Now, moving forward doesn't mean the business is going to work perfectly or the marriage is going to work perfectly or whatever, but she's moving forward, right? right? And, and what's also beautiful is this, from a Epi, if you look at the study of epigenetics, and that is the interaction between people at a cellular level through just the energetics. For example, when you walk into a room and you know your spouse is upset, you're like, mm -hmm. they don't say a thing. You just feel them. You're like, oh, 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 oh. Or yes. you have kids and they're like, mom's in a bad mood. That's why I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> you know, that's what I mean by epigenetics. At I play. think you're describing our house yesterday. Really? <laughs> yeah. And what, I, what you can't um, disregard, whether it be business or personal, is our epigenetics, the interaction we have with people, 
that when we deal with our own inner tug of war with the person, all of a sudden it opens up this whole new possibility with them in the conversation on what can be created because they're not feeling it. They're not feeling like, imagine yes. me having a big barbed hook. Okay. Like a fishing hook, but make it a huge one for a big old shark. And I've got this huge hook around how I feel about men and specifically this man that betrayed me, whether it be a spouse or whether it be my business partner. Well, the deal is if that tug of war, big hook is that big, anytime I'm in a conversation, my hook is snagging yep. on them all the time yep. and I'm making it about them. Not that it's my big ass hook. It's my right. hook. Well, we go through life with little medium and big hooks everywhere. And we're wondering why we're snagged and we want to make the other person wrong. And I'm not saying there could not have been a wronged, but imagine if you did your part and melted those hooks so you could powerfully bring yourself to the conversation. And now they can actually hear what you want to say. But Shannon, let me play devil's advocate with you okay, for a do little it. bit Come if on. you don't mind. Um, <laughs> so you're telling me that I have a hook because he cheated on me. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. He, he cheated on me. Uh, he's the one that put the hook in here. He's the reason why I, you know, I'm not going to trust and I'm not going to be open. He's the reason why, not me. Oh, okay. Uh, not a problem. We can totally say that he had his part in it. Okay. Right. He had his part in it. And the way I look at a relationship is it's pretty much a tango. Yes. There's, there's the um, betrayals are co created as hard as that is to hear. Even, and a lot of the co-creation in betrayal has to do with a woman closing up front. It's not all the time, but a lot of the time, I hear with the men we've worked with, the woman divorced him and stayed in the marriage years before he betrayed a yeah. lot of times. And I'm not saying that's 100%, but my point would be this. Anything in life that triggers us, that is a mirror looking back at us. Yes. On, that's our hook. And it does not mean that the other person is not responsible for what they did. I'm not, I'm not doing, saying that at all. I'm saying, right. guess what? My hook is costly to me. And if yes. I matter, if I matter and I love me well, I owe it to myself to melt those hooks so I can powerfully create my life and say yes or no to what I choose to instead of the hooks running the show. That's what well, I'm saying. What I love about what you're saying is it is powerful. We're not saying melt the hooks and then just go back and don't fix, oh, no. right? You're no. saying step into something where you can be boundaried and you can understand absolutely all of the parts of you that maybe you don't understand when you've been hurt with betrayal. Absolutely. So, so, so I'm just thinking through a lot. You're really triggering a lot of thoughts in my, in my mind, Shannon. I love it. Um, so femininity is all about being open, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so our natural response to fear is to, to run and hide, is to shut down. And so, and, and this really is the song and dance that we, that we see with betrayal trauma recovery is to, to stay open, to, to stay in a growth mindset, to be able to love still, um, but but also recognize what that betrayal is telling you that you should do, right? That that's right. kind of the that that's the hard thing to to overcome, and that's what you were talking about: uh, massive amounts of self reflection and mindfulness and understanding of your power, regardless of them. Um, that really is the key thing to be able to do that, right? Yes, absolutely. And to give an example of like when I think about my the story that I brought up at the beginning around Sarah. And I haven't had a chance to like share where that plays out if you add another 40 or more years on to her life. But it, it impacted the next husband she chose. It impacted how she groomed her children. It also impacted, because of the stacking effect, all kinds of physical ailments, massive lower back pain, massive headaches. We're talking complete tightness in the shoulders, aging, I mean, just, some major things in the body shows up. And here's my thing. It's not what Sarah went through that wasn't like, how do I put this? My, I have complete compassion. Like that wasn't her doing. Right. Okay. And she at some point has to say, I matter so much that I'm not going to let his choices 
make me want to throw in the towel of my, the rest of my entire yes. life. It, yes. And so this beautiful gift of, you know what, grieve, be messy, let yourself have all of the emotions and feel it fully. And at some point, because how much you love yourself, how might we step up in a very powerful way of, you know what, this is a blessing to get to do this life and to get to be me. And I'm going to, I'm choosing to be the best and the most powerful version of me because I'm committed to creating a certain life. And some people that might be listening to this, if they're really in a place right now of a lot of pain, starting to create something new feels really far away mm -hmm. because the inner tug of war and the pain is still so available and so quick to just be there. How about we integrate through that inner tug of war of, I want to trust again. I don't, I want a man in my life. Forget it. I'll stay single. It's a lot easier. Right. Uh, that whole thing. Uh, I want to forgive. No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm going to um, extend the benefit of the doubt. Forget that. Right. How can we deal with that so that then we can be clear? What are we, what are we committed to? Right. This is all, I mean, what you just shared, none, I know for sure Ashlyn's talked about that, but, but I've also had the same all or nothing uh, conversations within my head. So, for, so if it's okay, I wanted to ask this question, and, and that is if, if you're to speak to the, the men who have betrayed trust, okay, mm -hmm. trust, mm -hmm. yeah. and if they're, and, and oftentimes um, a, a big a big theme that we talk about is, is you're working towards, and this is my, my conversation with those who have betrayed, who have betrayed, is you're working to earn safety and trust in your relationship again. And oftentimes it would be easier, in, in my mind, it would have been easier to win the Powerball than it was to <laughs> foster yes. safety and trust. Because I was like, I don't even know what that looks, how do I even do that? Right. 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 So if we take safety and trust off the table, can is it possible for you to speak to the men who have betrayed trust to say, how do you foster femininity in your partner? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, the first and foremost thing is women can smell BS a mile away. Amen. <laughs> and so from number one, getting really real with what the cost has been for her and for yourself and coming in a way that's authentic and really with language that's authentic, express that I, I would say in asking of some form of forgiveness, but if you ask it for 45 times from a place of inauthenticity, we're not gonna be able yes. to hear that. Yes. So coming with authenticity and wholeheartedness and open vulnerability is number one. And then, then here's the next gift she, you could give is saying, um, I know that my actions in such and such have cost us both. And I would like for you to share with me what that looks like for you. And you let me have it if I need to, like you, like I can handle what you need to say. I want to know what it's like for you. And for the men, they're thinking, oh my gosh, you mean I'm going to let her kick me in the balls for five hours? You've got to be kidding. No, what, what I mean is That's just is day this. one. That's just, <laughs> <laughs> what she wants to know is if I can be wild and messy and stormy and share all of this stacking that's been going on and you still be as strong as a rock in authenticity and, and you be a safe masculine presence, presence that's loving and authentic, while I can be wild and crazy, you are starting immediately to earn my trust that you can handle this. Wow. I love that. Wow. And, and, and that is not being a doormat. It's not no. being a dog. It's, it's, the, it's, it's getting kicked. It's, it's being strength. It's being pillared. You're, I'm okay. I know who I am. So I can, I can, I can hear you. You're, this, this emotional energy, all this stuff, I can, I can hold this. And that's what will will start to rebuild the trust. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was just going to say a danger that we get into, especially let's just assume the woman was the one that has had the trust betrayed. And I say this with the most compassion that I can. At some point, you have to get clear 
do you want to give this another opportunity to create something or not? And if we're really going to clean the slate, what does that really mean? And are you really creating the best opportunity to do that? Because if we're going to ball kick and we're going to continue mm -hmm. to bring up the past, like this Trump card that you can bust out at any moment, yeah, like it just, it disintegrates all progress. And a lot of women may not be able to hear that because we're still dealing with pain and we're not ready to talk about, let's start creating something in a new way. And that's why I just want to say, I'm very compassionate to like, let's deal with the pain that's really real right now and the tug of war, I want to be here, I don't. Let's resolve that so then you know what you're clear to create. And I feel for men that have been in that situation because they're like, how do I ever recover from this? Right. Yeah. How, how, how does that look? And I would say that um, it it is a non-powerful move for a woman to bring that out as a trump card for the rest of their life. A non-powerful, would, would it also move, be better to say move. a non-feminine? But, but Shannon, Shannon, I would also say this, that, uh, you know, while we're talking about kicking in the balls, um, you know, she can kick him in the balls, but oftentimes it's a non-powerful move for him to sit there and not be boundaried and not know who he is to say, Absolutely. look, I'm okay with this. Just keep doing this. And you're not saying I'm okay, like be there and be okay with it. You're saying be there and be okay with her pain. Yes. Don't be okay with her shame and her attacks no. and those things, right? Exactly. So, Absolutely. They're both showing up powerful. Then he's showing up knowing who he is and she's showing up knowing who she is in her pain and speaking that pain Absolutely. and he's holding it. Okay. Right? Yes. So, so here's the follow-up question to this, Shannon, is in this scenario, how, how would you, um, what message would you give to the man who needs to be firm, grounded, unflappable, steady, strong, in that moment when his partner is unloading her pain and her hurts? Great question. How, how, can, how can the man, despite the shame, because the shame is really the, the enemy to what is the enemy to masculinity, is the enemy to facilitating femininity in their partner. How do they, how do they stand firm and strong and resolute to be there for them? When historically, so, maybe they haven't. Right, yeah. Uh, so um, the, my gut feel is obviously ownership taking ownership. And again, you are great smelling BS. So if it's BS ownership, we'll, we'll know. We'll yes. know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, authentic taking ownership, but here's a real key thing. Uh, the men doing this exercise of their own inner tug of war, for, I'm, and I'm making some assumptions. Let's just say we're this scenario, the man, let's just say was addicted let's say, to pornography or some yeah. kind of a sexual addiction. The man even resolving, there's a part of me that still wants to do that and a part of me that doesn't. The part of me that hates myself, a part of me that loves myself. Yes. A part yeah. of me that I would die for my wife, a part of me that wants to say, you know what, it's easier to go do this with a new woman. Right. Yeah. I don't yes. want to put up with this. Like, see, he's got his own hooks and then they go into this hooked, both hooked <laughs> conversation, help us all, right? <laughs> and so if the gentleman would do his part of being unhooked so he can really show up in a place that's grounded. But here's the number one thing. Women can feel in a man's posture when he's owning his masculinity, shoulders up, chest back, and this open, courageous, I love you. I'm going nowhere. I will protect you. I will yes. die for you energy with no words, but through your eyes and through your heart. If you are showing up like that, she can only be so stormy for so long until she can, she's testing the fortress. Are you going to crumble? Are you going to yeah. crumble? And then yeah. at some point she's like, nah, he's there. And she will end up melting in a beautiful way as a beginning of an opening because she's trying to see, are you going to go anywhere? Because I'm being messy. But a lot of it, and I know it's, it sounds interesting that I'm going into like posture but there is something so attractive. Like we joke, like I have the Wonder Woman example, like let's role play and have Thor coming out. <laughs> it's always Thor. I swear yeah. that guy. I know. I know. <laughs> I love Thor. Oh, and, 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 <laughs> I or, or Captain America, you know, and yes. I know we're being fun and we're using Marvel, you know, characters. But like, if you think about, if you feel their, their posture, 
And the way they own themselves, even when they're soft-spoken, even when they're contemplating, there's this thing that goes steady, stable, safe, trustworthy, like there's an unshakable, but yes. here's the deal. If a man has gone through something like this and he's felt shamed and he's got this inner tug of war going on for himself, you know, I'm a piece of, you know what, but yes. then wait a minute, I'm the father of the children and I am going to be a leader and I'm going to stand up and protect my bride, period. Wait a minute. I feel like I'm going to crumble the pieces. I don't even know how I can face her, but you know, on the other hand, no way. I, you know, I can, I would jump in front of a car for her. Wait a second. How do I reconcile that in this moment of when, let's just say the, the hooked conversation happens and all of his insecurities come out because he's like, you know, I failed her. So my point would be the men in this scenario have just as much inner tug of war to handle so that they can show up like that rock that she's looking for so that she can melt back into her femininity. And she's not saying I have to strap on a pair to make sure that I don't get hurt by you again. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. I love it. Okay. And, and, and that's, again, that's super important for the, the man to understand exactly what they need to be able to do. Again, just to, just to repeat that it's making certain that they show up in and can own with like from an energy standpoint, meaning like, they can say the words, but also have the, the presence, yes. the emotional presence to actually own that and have the emotional presence to sit in and say, what was the cost for you? Yes. I want to understand from your eyes, what did my actions cost you? Even the simple phrase, how was this for you? How is this for you? Okay. And, and then here's the ninja phrase once she's fully expressed, and it may not be in the same conversation. But I love this phrase. It's the how might I, how or how might we, how might we create the next step? Yes. How might I create trust for you again? What would that look like? How might we, how might I? And it's just a beautiful way um, to co-collaborate in that conversation. And then I would say to the men and I, um, you know, we have, no power over forcing our partners to do any of this, but it's like, if your woman's got some hooks and you know that, number one, I would love it if she would have the opportunity to do her own melting of her own hooks so she could bring herself in a clean, like free way to the conversation. But just, I guess what I'm saying is this, yeah, you might be the cause in this situation that, that brought it up right now. But the likelihood that this is generational, it goes into a whole nother conversation and the conversation and more than likely she's had some form of betrayal before now, this is a stacking effect and we're getting the full blow of all yeah. these stacking, not to mention even generational things that are going on. Wow. So it can create some compassion of like, wow, wow. But if I, if, if she has hooks, and I have my own hooks and my own shame, then we kind of create, start creating hooks together and more Absolutely. and more and more. Right. But if I show up, um, compassionate and I show up masculine, um, then I really, um, influence and support her to actually do that self-reflection um, I explore, I can explore with her without taking things personally. I can, mm -hmm. I can, I can really be a good support for her and not blame her and say, look, you got these hooks, you're, you're bad, but actually be strong enough um, to help her in, in the areas where she might be struggling. Right. Uh, absolutely. And if she's in a place of hurt, I don't know if she's gonna, um, when we're really hurt, it's really hard to, uh, instantly be open. And, and so this is yes. what I would say, because this is what I feel so much from the women is it's like, prove it to me, prove it to me, prove it to me. Mm -hmm. I let me prove it to me. And so it's almost impossible for the guy to go, what does it take? Because I'm under a microscope now, what am I supposed to do? This is what I would say, besides the posture and the presence of, I love you. I'm going nowhere. I'm here for you doing something to actually have male or female, but I'd say male, like a, you know, like coaching or accountability in some way that she sees action 
being taken besides trust my word. Well, right, right. you know, she's thinking, ah, how'd that work for me, bucko? You know, it's <laughs> exactly. like, so action, being in action and, and not like I'm having to work this off, but more, here's the deal. Can the man own that he wants to be a man of integrity for him, huh. his freaking self first? Yes. Yeah. Like, like, whoa, wait a minute. For him to really go, you know what? I'm taking ownership of this. And yes, this has cost you, but it's cost me with myself. And I am wrapping, I'm going to clean this relationship up with myself. And this is what I'm going to do to be in action about it. And I'm going to let you know. That goes a huge way because so many of the couples we've worked with, um, or even women I've worked with, let's say that, the men are like, you mean I'm going to be in a room and we're going to have to talk about what's working and not working and we're going to talk about sex? I would rather you chop something off than me to be in a situation <laughs> than have to be exposed, especially if they think they've messed up, yes. right? Yeah, and for sure. So finding a way to get in action to display your commitment to her and yourself and reestablishing integrity. Yeah. Based on what you said, Shannon, I can think back to years and this is going to be quick, but years of when I was acting out in addiction and Ashton was observing all the things, all, all the things that I was doing to demonstrate addiction, but she wasn't observing anything else that I was doing or I guess because I wasn't doing anything to move in a positive direction where I could um, establish trust or safety in any capacity. So when recovery finally began, I thought the only thing I can do now, cause I can't, I can't control her. I can't keep her to, I can't convince her to stay. I'm just going to pour my energy into the things that I can do, which is I've got a bunch of daily activities and boundaries with, with which I, I, I live in. And I knew I had to own that myself, but I also knew that Ashwin was watching. So it was this balance, kind of like this gut check balance for me personally thinking this is mine and I'm going to own it but she's going to observe it. So I don't want to check boxes, but I want to live this. And now those are things I just do regardless of whether Ashlyn is involved or not. Like I just do those things. And I think that had an impact for sure on you, Ashlyn, did it not? Yes, it did. And what I love about everything you're seeing, Shannon, uh, is that it's what our message is. You're here to work on the me before the we, and yeah. you really can't jump into that. We without working and being reflective on your own self and right. your own stuff. And the exciting part of that is, is you get to change the generations after Absolutely. you, right? And so um, let's wrap this up with some of your final thoughts on what the link is between trust and femininity. I would just submit to women when I look at my story with Sarah is the cost of staying closed because of a, a betrayal has cost her so much and the influence that she's passed down. And I was one of the recipients of that out of a place of love and total protection for me, right? There is such a big cost that it's so much even bigger than the immediate relationship to the point it can literally take a woman's life, like maybe not physical life, but the life out of her. Mm -hmm. And there's no betrayal worth removing your life yes. for because you matter and um and sometimes if you're in a place of pain it's hard to hear that you matter enough like it's just too messy but i like a little leverage to go is what about your kids i am a beautiful example of what the armor kind of getting passed along and what it ended up costing me in my own marriage and i just say it out of love as like man there's nothing worth staying closed so that you lose your access to the power of your true femininity that actually produces vibrant, passionate, trusting relationships. Um, and cool. I, I just want to give hope that there is so much hope on the other side, as far as this is absolutely powerful, can happen. And the exercise I'm going to leave you guys with has never, ever, not worked with tens of thousands of people, literally, in less than 20 minutes. If okay. you play full out. I'm excited. Let's hear it. Give it to us. Okay. So it is literally, uh, it's just the inner tug of war worksheet. And uh, you can get to it at 
at actually it's the profitable marriage.com okay. the profitable we'll put marriage. that in the show notes yes. as well as in yeah youtube and yeah I so it's just the profitable marriage.com forward slash podcast and i will work walk them through two exercises there's a little pdf to kind of create another context but i'm literally going to give a context of the inner tug of war and to actually show you and I'll do it with you. I'll lead you through the exercise of like my part feels this and my part feels this and it makes me feel completely crazy. And how are we going to resolve that so that we don't have opposites pulling at the same time so that we can now powerfully make that conversation or make a choice around the marriage, a business, children, etc. Oh, I love this. I love that you've given them an actionable item totally that they can walk away with as well as how they can get more information from Shannon because I really love this. I hope our audience did too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, guys. I I just love this uh, conversation and I appreciate you so much for letting me be on with you. Thank you, Shannon. That was amazing. Again, guys, we're going to have information in the show notes on how to connect with Shannon and all of her her efforts across the board to uh, just enhance the human experience um, across the board, right? (laughs) So again, Shannon, thanks for your time today. Um, guys, if you haven't yet, hop over to uh, to iTunes, rate and review. Um, where again, we'll have those the ways that you can connect with Shannon uh, in the show notes. And again, Shannon, thanks for being here, guys. Appreciate it. Thank we'll see you, you again. Bye bye.